Okay. Um, so I'm working at Canterbury Christchurch, and I want to give you a bit of introduction about what, what, what I'm doing. So my uh, major is in laser engineering, which is part of advanced manufacturing. And the difference between manufacturing and advanced manufacturing is that I am using the high tech recent technology in my, uh, in my work. Uh, because manufacturing can use any technology, not necessarily the advanced high technology one, but within advanced technology, you are using the very recent high spec technologies that has been developed um, to be used. I give you briefly about my CV. So I am a laser engineering and the reason I am is because I'm interested in the changes that's happening in the world. Uh, and I want to be part of this transformation uh, on a daily basis. And uh, if I want to tell you about my education, first I become a physicist because I was interested about to see what's going on around the world and I wanted to know more. And then uh, while I was studying physics, I learned about the laser, how they are made and how we can use them. Then I came to UK and uh, I started uh, to learn about how to use lasers in daily life and within industry. I have about plus 10 years of experience using lasers. I can design safe car for you guys and for passengers. Uh, there are plenty different type of lasers with different characteristics. And these days I am more into to a metal 3D printing, which I'm gonna talk a bit about later on. Uh, the skills that I have is that I know how to operate lasers safely. Uh, I can use them to solve problems. I can find a better solution for existing problems. And sometimes I create things that they don't exist yet. But that, that's not all of my life. I have a balanced life. I am into sports and also I have different hobbies. I like to run. I, I have finished three half marathons. I play squash and also I love mountain hiking whenever I can. And also I am very much into art, uh, mainly into paintings. I also paint myself sometimes with oil. And the main person that I love to work is uh, Van Gogh. Okay, uh, so let's talk about the lasers. Uh, I'm assuming that uh, a lot of you uh, are familiar with laser tag. I guess you have played or you wanted to play or you have seen it. So all of these uh, lights, green lights also that you can see, these are the uh, lasers as well, but they are safe lasers so that if they hit you, nothing gonna happen because they have a lower power. So if you can see, this is like one of the lasers that it should green light. Also, we can have the lasers with different colors and then somehow with some equipment, optical equipments, we can divide them in half and with one laser source have two lights coming out. So if you can see in this picture here, we have different colors of the lasers. They can be with no color or different colors like the lights and each of them has their own uh, properties. They are different from each other and we are using them in different applications. If you can see here, this complicated table, so we have some lasers and then we are using some optics and mirror to guide them through. Basically, we want to bend the beam. We are using some mirrors to direct it and give it a direction where to go. Also, we can use lasers in industry dealing with metals and uh, stiff geometries. Uh, you can see here and uh, or we can make holes in the metal parts. So it can go as fun as laser tag into very heavy industry use or into optics. So it has variety of the application. Okay, so all of the, these that you have seen in this slide, so this could be a few examples of the final product. So we can use lasers to cut, and then bend them. We can even make the 3D shape out of them. Or we can work with the stiff geometries like tubes and then bend them and shape them without touching them. Uh, uh, or we can make some arts out of metal sheets or piece of wood. We can actually use the laser for artistic work. 
we can join two pieces together. It's more like a swing that you do cut, you form it, you change the shape or you attach them together. For example, in the sheep industry, it's been used for a long time now, also in automotive industry nowadays, that you can join the, uh, instead of the normal welding, you can do the laser welding because it's more precise and gives you better final uh, product. Or you can use it in the 3D metal printing. Uh, so that what I would talk about. Um, I don't know how many of you heard about the metal 3D printing, but I'm sure you are familiar with the printer that we're going to print something out. So, but this 3D printer is different. So you design something on your computer and then you send the design to your laser. Your laser is attached to a big bucket of powder. These powders are metals, but it's a metal powder. Basically you have metal instead of the shape in a powder shape. Then this gonna come down through the mixer and then the laser beam is like a heat that's sintering them together. It's like melt them and attach them together. But it will follow your design, whatever shape you have given it. And it goes layer by layer. And at the final, uh, you can have a complex structure at the end. And this is called metal 3D printing, which is very popular nowadays, and it is finding its way through the industry, and it has many, many applications. It doesn't need necessarily be metals. Uh, I'm sure you have heard that it's going to be used in surgeries as well, that they're going to print out your 3D print your joint uh, and replace it, for example, or replacement of the hip. So instead of the metal, they are using the soft materials or the materials existing in the bones or palatines, and then they're gonna print it in any shapes you want. So they can tailor it to your body, what is your hip looks like, and then printing it out there. And then the surgeon gonna implant it in your body. So it has, so 3D printing, it has many, many applications nowadays from industry and working with metals into the soft materials and the list goes on. So this is one example, one of the projects that I worked about. So nowadays, apart from the sheep industry and medicine, also automotive industry is very much using uh, laser processing now because they're all more automated now and they are using the high tech nowadays to produce the safer and better cars like Audi, Hyundai and Ford. So if you look at here, can you see this tube? Yeah, I'm going to show you where is that tube in the car in structure in the following slides to give you a better understanding how the cars are made. So if you look at here, you can see these are like the pictures of that, how the car factories look like nowadays. As you can see, it's a lot of robots around the car. It's pretty much automated. It's not like before that it's like many people were trying to build a car. Nowadays, a lot of it is automated. They are using the robots to, to make and construct the frame of the car and other pieces, okay? But you can see that these cars, they have frames that they need to make precisely to save you. So if you look at these follow pictures, you see that it's the same car, but I am showing you two different zones. One is the safety zone, and this is where you're gonna sit with your parents or with your friends there and you want to be safe. So this part in a safe safety cage, it needs to be as safe as possible because we want to protect you in case if there is a car accident or it's a crash, okay? And then you can see there is a crumble zone. That's a crumble zone. That means it's gonna be smashed when you have a car accident or any accident. That means from here and here, it's okay if it's smashed, as long as it reaches the safety cage and then it protects you. So the material that it's using or the structure that it's using in the crumple zone is different from the safety cage. And I just need to mention that these uh, circles here just to illustrate. So by the crumple, we mean the where the engine is and where the trunk is. And by safety cage basically means what, wherever the passenger is, depends on the design of the car, whether it's four seat or whether it's six seat passenger. Okay, so let's look at this in more. So you can see this, this structure and can you resemble this with the shape of the, for example, tubes? 
that we, we saw here. Okay, so let's talk about that a bit more. Okay, so if you look at here, so this is the structure of the car. And if you can see, it's color coded. What does the colors mean? That means every specific part of it is made with different sort of steel and material and different techniques. So can you see that how advanced is the technology beyond making the cars? So we are, for example, using one sort of material here on the pink color. The green one is a different, the blue one is a different material and each of them needs a different process. If you look at the picture here, this is like the more simpler picture. And I was working on the frame here. Basically, I was making on a very specific, very strong material that has engineers developed that material, which is way stronger than normal steel. And with the laser, I was bending it and welding it at this uh, specific places. And the reason is because here we don't want it to crumble. This is where the passengers are and we want it to be very, very safe. Okay. Also, there are different advantages because we can use a very, very strong material in the places we want rather than the whole car. And that means the car will become lighter. And then because we can use the lighter material in a parts that it doesn't need to be very strong. And we specifically used the strongest material possible in the places that we want it to be. As a result, the car will be lighter and then it will be uh, better in the car crashes. And also it will uh, consume less fuel. So it is also more environmental friendly because at the end we have one earth and it's our job as engineer to protect it when we are designing different things, okay? We always have that in mind to be sustainable, okay? So if you look at it here, it's a closer look. So this is an example of this tube here that I managed to bend it with the degree that we needed with the laser without touching it, only by heat. You can see the distance here. And then I use the robotic faro arm that has a scanner head around it so that I was scanning it in order to do better measurements to see the shape and I can do some calculation around it, okay? I also do other parts as well. And I was talking about that to be environmentally friendly. One of the parts we do as engineers is to do some simulation or computational work. I know when you hear about the computational work, you think that's a guy or girl sitting in front of the PC and doesn't have a world and just deal with numbers, but it's not like that anymore. As you can see, what I have here is more like animation. Basically, I am creating the computational animation of the process that I am doing here. So what I want to have here, you can see that I, I use uh, uh, some software packages and I do some simulation work. And this, I can run it like as a video as well to show exactly how the process it is. And then when I'm sure of my design that everything is okay, then I will run it. So instead of running it 100 times, consuming a lot of material and energy, I will run it virtually. After I'm happy with it, then I'm gonna test it. And then I run it five times. So can you see that how much I am saving the energy and the material? Also, when I'm dealing with the very complicated shapes and process, I can virtually design them and then if I'm happy with the results, then I started to design the experiment. So it's helping a lot. And it's quite fun, actually. It's quite fun. I'm enjoying. OK, so now let's go back to see if you are interested in STEM or engineering uh, programs. So there are certain skills that if you already have them, that means you already have a potential to be an engineer. The first one is numeracy. So are you good with numbers? Do you like numbers? Do you want to play with numbers? Then you, you are a candidate. Do you like the practical skills, hand in skills, build the things with your hand? Are you interested in doing that? Are you, how is your communication skills? Because as an engineer, it's not, it's mainly, it's a team working. So you will be in a team and then all of you are gonna work on a project. You can work solo, but 
also if you are good at the communication skills that would be very handy which is led to teamwork as you can see because during the team you need to communicate as well and these are all related the most important thing are you enjoying puzzles do you like to solve problems problem solving if you have a curious mind that you want to solve things or you can find a better solution even if there is an existing solution you think this is not good enough or you can make it better or uh, find a solution then engineering is for you and also if you have it skills you're good with pc and computer again you can do engineering so you may not need to have all of them because each of them can lead to different parts of engineering but if you have these skills and you enjoy working within these skills that means the engineering could be a future choice for you guys okay So please ask me if you have any questions. I try to uh, not to use them a lot of technical words and vocabularies, but if there is anything that you don't understand or if you have a questions, please feel free to ask me. Thank you very much, Gazal, uh, for sharing that with us today, your br brilliant presentation. Um, just like Gazal said then, what we'll do is if you could put in your questions into the Q&A facility, or you could put them in the chat facility as well. And uh, those watching on Facebook, if you put them in the comments section, we've already got some that have come through, Gazal, some questions. So the first one I'd like to ask is, um, you were talking about your cars and things that you, the cars that you work on. Is it a strange feeling? Uh, when you see these cars out on the roads or or, one that, or something that you've worked on, is it is it a proud or a strange moment for you? Um, I think at the very beginning, when I was working with the big names like Honda, it was strange. Uh, but now I am I am proud to be part of that project. It's a lot of technology technology involved. I was involved in one project uh, during my PhD, but I'm so proud because I know like how much. Uh, thinking and effort it takes to to make uh, simple changes or small changes in in these uh, high tech industries. So I'm definitely very very proud. Uh, we've got a question here that's come through asking, um, what made you um, get into engineering in the first place? Well, actually, as I said at the beginning, I was a physicist originally. I wasn't an engineer, so I was into STEM because I was curious and I wanted to understand the universe better. I wanted to know what's happening and why things are happening. And while I was a physicist, I started to study the lasers to see that how are we gonna make a laser uh, fr from the atomic level. And then, uh, then I realized that this is a very, very useful thing. And then I was more curious to see now how we can use these lasers and where we can use them. That's why when I shifted to engineering, um, and I came to UK, so laser engineering is part of advanced manufacturing and mechanical engineering. So uh, the best core for it would be mechanical engineering with advanced manufacturing or just mechanical engineering, and then you can go to uh, uh, laser engineering. Then I wanted to use what I know about the laser in day-to-day -day life and uh, to see that where I can, I can use it, and that's why I studied laser engineering. Were you kind of creating things when you were younger? Did you get into kind of maths and, and science during school? Is that what you enjoyed? Uh, yeah, I was actually, I was enjoying art and uh, maths uh, both. And uh, I know not everyone is like that, but uh, for me, it was a difficult decision. But at the end, I managed to find the balance. I definitely enjoy maths and I like science. Uh, I was... I was curious and I wanted to know what's happening. And then I would find out the logic behind it. It was so satisfying. Uh, and then, so I took art as a hobby and I took science as a career. Do you feel like doing things like um, art and these other hobbies that you were talking about, is, is this where you kind of obviously um, take a break from engineering, but then do you feel kind of more creative then? And when you come back to engineering, um, you, you, you've got this chance to kind of use your creativity and you, and things like that as well. Well, I think uh, creativity is important in any career. So, I mean, art is something personal that I like, but you, if you want to be a good engineer, you, you need to be a good creative person as well, because the more creative you are, the better solutions you will find. 
uh, for the problems that you're solving. Uh, so you can be purely engineer and be very creative. And as I can say, you can still be engineer and then have an artistic application. For example, even in the laser engineering, which is a very high tech, uh, you can still do those design with the metals and the wood as well. And that is also part of the job that only an engineer can do that. An artist cannot do that because it is using laser and it needs a lot of research and study around it to find the right parameter and right design and strategies in order to do that. So if you're a creative person, there's nothing to stop you to bring that to your career. Yeah, I guess those are really important things for you as well. To, that, that's brought that to your career and different aspects that have brought to your career as well. Okay. Um, so the next next question is asking, uh, what is kind of your favorite part of your job and, or the most interesting part you think to your job? Okay, the most interesting part is that when you are giving a problem and you have no idea how to do it, like at the very, very beginning, and then that's a moment that you need to sit back and then think about all the skills you have, everything you know, and start to create something, start to find a solution. You won't get it right at the beginning always. Sometimes you get, sometimes you don't. And then you start with something and then you work from there. You make it better each time you optimize it, you test it, you find out why it's not working or how it can work better. And then you work from there. And that's very, very exciting. It's so fresh and it's never boring. And the satisfactory part is when it's finished and you know now it's ready to go. It's gonna be part of many people's life, day-to-day -day life. And then you know, okay, I solved something and now people are gonna use and have a better life, easier life, safer life. And then you move on to the next project. And, and what's the most kind of interesting project that you've worked on, do you think? Because uh, I know you've obviously mentioned some in your presentation there. What's, is it hard to choose? It is very hard to choose because this project is uh, very specific and you're involved in it. And then, um, so all of them are interesting, but uh, one of the most interesting projects that currently I'm working on is the dis respiratory design for NHS in Kent University because of the current situation. So we, as a team of engineers in Christchurch, now we are uh, designing a specific uh, clothes for them, for PPP, PPE, to, in order to have a fan and have a fresh air coming and it's be comfortable that if you're wearing it 12 hours per day. And so we 3D print some part of it. We look at the airflow in these different sort of bigger mask and hopefully we'll be able to produce it for them soon enough so that we give we help them in this uh, situation and that's what i like about uh, mechanical engineering or laser engineering that we can find solution for short term and long term it doesn't need to be always long term when we are in a crisis we can still come up with solutions and help and ease down the situation which is lovely you can be part of it and we can help that's really good that's a that's, that's brilliant and a, a really nice event kind of um perk to your job is that you get to to help people in that way as well exactly that's that's the whole point at the end you want to use all of your skills to to help people and create things and uh, solve problems We've got a nice question here asking about, uh, obviously, what with lasers quite a lot. And when you see lasers in films or TV shows, um, do, you, do you kind of uh, say, oh, it would never it would never work that way or anything like that? Or do you just think, oh, it, it's a film? <laughs> uh, it depends. Some of them actually works like that. Not all of them are that bad. Uh, of course, we are away from shooting people with laser weapons. Uh, <laughs> that's a bit more like a fantasy. Uh, but some of them are actually working and some of them are saying like, oh yeah, I should have been there. I could, I could show you a better application of it. It could be more interesting, uh, but I love it. I'm loving all sorts of lasers. Um, so we had, it was, well, it was International Women in Engineering Day, um, I think a couple of weeks ago now. Um, is this something that's really important to you? Obviously a, a woman, a female that is in engineering yourself. Um, are you always kind of passionate about that, pushing that forward? Oh, definitely. I, we are, uh, I myself and the uh, Christchurch Engineering Department is part of the VES, which is Women Engineering Society. And we are participating there and uh, in the conferences and talks. And it's very, very important. I think last year it was the 100 years uh, anniversary of the VES Society. 
because if you go back a long time ago, women weren't involved. Actually, without the technology, without the uh, Industrial Revolution, all the time, all the hours of the day for women was consumed by cleaning the house and preparing food and to look after the family and kids. There was no time left to do anything else. But with the technology developed, so you have the, you have the electric stove or gas stove, you will have like the vacuum cleaner, dishwasher, washing machine and all sorts of things. So it doesn't, it free up the woman's time and actually to pursue their, their talents and to see what they wanted to do. And it's very, very important because I strongly believe that gender cannot be a barrier to, to reach what you want to do and to follow your dream. The only thing that you need to follow is your dream and what you like and what you want to be. The rest can be solved. And I am a woman from Middle East, so I'm not coming from an easy society uh, uh, regarding to, to, to be an engineer or to be a scientist and to work, but I did it. So if I can do it, you can do it. I think that's some great advice already there for those female engineers. But I'd just like to ask one last question, um, which would be what kind of tips or advice would you give to any of the young budding engineers listening today that you've kind of learned along the way, Egg is out? So uh, uh, I have two advice. One of them, you may not like it, but I insist that you, you review your mathematics and physics if you think that you are a bit shake it there because they are like a tools. So mathematics and physics, look at it like the tools that equip, equip you to be a better engineer. So they are helping you to be a better engineer. Uh, and then after you learn them, they become fun. They won't be difficult anymore. The other advice is that never let that curiosity that you have die. You need to keep that fresh till the end. Till the last day that you're working, you need that and that will inspire you to do amazing projects and to be very creative and be good at your job. Again, I think some brilliant advice for those uh, young engineers today. So I just want to say a really big thank you, Gazelle, uh, for taking time out of your day to do this for us today. It's been brilliant. And I hope you've enjoyed answering those questions. Yes, I did. And I hope that uh, our students enjoyed as well. And it's an honor, honor to be invited to, to talk to you guys. Uh, I know that you are the next generation and uh, you will be amazing people out there and hopefully uh, I do a little bit with it in order to inspire you if you're interested into the science and engineering. Brilliant and a big thank you to those who've been sending in those questions as well and I hope you've all been inspired to take on our Leaders Award competition and start designing some of your own inventions. Use our resources at leadersaward.com to help you and please join us there. We've got lots of uh, upcoming interviews as well this week. Um, Again, I think we'll leave it there. I've also put in a survey there for those participants been watching. So if you complete that as well. Um, so bye, everyone. Thank you again, Gazelle. Bye, everyone.